It's Celebrity MasterChef. I really, really like food. I really, really like making food. These celebrities are all passionate about food. I will eat anything in a restaurant. I will cook anything. We're looking for that exceptional cooking stuff. Someone who's more than just a good home cook. Someone with that extra something special. It's inbuilt, wanting to win. These six celebrities believe they've got what it takes to become Master Chef. But who will really have the talent? To find out, they must survive three rigorous tests. First, they have to invent two dishes from scratch out of a mystery box of ingredients. It's like me kebabs falling out of it, pizza and, and salad. Then they have to survive the pressure of cooking their own dish for paying customers. One green, one venison, away in one minute, yeah? Yes, chef. She need to move. And they have to wow the judges with their best two-course menu. It's soft, it's soothing, it's packed full of flavour. I think it's really delicious. But after all of that, only two of them can make it through to the quarter-finals. It's day one, and three celebrities now have to prove what they're made of. You have to demonstrate for us some cooking ability. You've got to show us a bit of passion. You've got to show us your real want to win this competition, but your real love for food. And all you've got to do is cook us two wonderful plates of food. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. The celebrities have 50 minutes to create two exceptional dishes from ingredients which include lamb, potatoes, couscous, chili, courgette, halloumi cheese, spring onions, pears, apricots and flaked almonds. We've got three celebrities in here today and they are going to have to cook and cook well if they want to advance through MasterChef because this is a serious cookery competition. Not a clue. Sean Lloyd is used to delivering the weather on live television. She has to deliver concise information in a short period of time. How good will she be trying to deliver concise food to us in a short period of time? Our office, the weather office, are food obsessed. We totally are. Maybe if sometimes we're not quite as accurate as we should be with the weather. It could be well down to our food obsession. Why is food so important to you? I was brought up with an arger at home, a coal-fired arger, so it dominated the kitchen. If it was really hot, there'd be scones. If it was low, meringues. So food has always dominated my life. The food that you aspire to on MasterChef, how different is that to the food that you grew up with? The food I grew up with tended to be gutsy home cooking. There's a lot more finesse to what I aspire to. Dennis Taylor, world champion snooker player. We know he can clear a snooker table, but what's he going to be like in a kitchen? Have you ever had one of those, an Irish mixed grill? It's, uh, it's boiled potatoes, roast potatoes, fried potatoes. It's just all the potatoes. Dennis, world championship you've held. Uh -huh. Is your cooking going to be world championship? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm going to try as hard as I would do if I was playing snooker, but uh, this is all new to me, boys. So you cook, you, you cook a bit now? I've just started cooking a bit now. I've got two young children, started another family going. I've got to do a bit more cooking now to help out in the house. You have 15 minutes left. That's all you've got. Shobna Galati we know as an actress of Coronation Street and we also know her as one of the dinner ladies and that means she's used to working off script. What will she be like with a set of ingredients and she actually has to come up with two dishes? I think culturally food is very important to me. It's a family thing and it's where the family got together and how, how you connect with each other. Shobna, you look very confident, almost calm. I am calm. Tell us about the, the sort of the food that you grew up with. 
actually it was quite mixed, the food I grew up with. Um, a mixture of Indian food and Western food. Is that your preferred style and this sort of Anglo-Indian style? I think my preferred style is any food that tastes good. How far do you think you can go on MasterChef? I'd like to go very far, all the way to the end. Bye-bye. <laughs> You've got six minutes. You have one minute. Step away from your benches, your time is up. Time up. Actress Shobna's first dish is baked halloumi cheese on a bed of couscous with peppers and almonds. Really lovely flavours. Really fresh flavours. But dish is too dry. Yes. The flavour of the mint against the pepper and the couscous um, is really delicious. I feel it's not quite a complete dish. Having burnt her potatoes, Shobna's pan-fried lamb with chilli and onions is now served with bread. It's like me kebabs falling out of its pizza and, and salad. It's very nicely cooked lamb and a little bit of heat of chilli and onion with it is a nice accompaniment. But there it stops and there's got to be more to a dish than that. Your lamb is beautifully seasoned, it's well cooked, it's got great, great depth of flavour. Really delicious. It's just not a complete dish. I feel as though actually we've got one plate of food today served on two different dishes. For his first dish, snooker champion Dennis has cooked Irish stew served on mashed potatoes. See, you, you look really nervous. I was absolutely petrified. I, I, I like the flavour on your lamb. It, it's seasoned, it's quite salty, but your mashed potatoes have got lumps in. For an Irishman, Dennis, it's unforgivable. That's pretty poor, yeah. The mashed potato is just a bit bland. And your stew, if it's a stew, it needs sauce. And that way it becomes moorish and comforting. At the moment, it's a bit... It's not really comforting. Can his poached pears with honeyed cream make a better impression? Pear is soft. There's a hint of white wine running through it. There's honey in the cream. Lovely flavours. Fragrant on the nose, fragrant on the palate. I think the idea of it is really well conceived. Weather presenter Sean has cooked lamb with courgettes and peppers on couscous drizzled with olive oil. I think your dish is very scruffy. A little bit slippery, a little bit greasy, but I love the sharp flavours of the pepper coming through that couscous. The predominant flavour I've got is the olive oil, and that's overpowering all those little subtle flavours. Let those peppers and courgettes and the lamb sing. Don't let them be overpowered by something as strong as olive oil. Sean's second dish is a pear and apricot crumble served with cream. The flavours are spot on. Those sweet apricots, a lovely rich pear. The problem is it's more like a bowl of muesli. You know, there's no butter on the top of your crumble. It's really tasty and it'd be great for breakfast with about half a pint of milk. <laughs> it's oaty, toasty and then fruity. Very, very nice indeed, but it's not a crumble. Well done. There's a lot more of this competition to come. Get yourselves an early night. Off you go. <laughs> Celebrity MasterChef, and today I think we had some promise in the room. 
Dennis, he manages to get two plates out. Actually, the pears weren't bad. They were poached really well, they were full of flavour, and the idea was really, really right. But Dennis promised us uh, an Irish stew, and what we had was we had dried bits of lamb and some mashed lumpy potato. It wasn't that fantastic. I was a bit disappointed with the old uh, Irish stew that I did, but uh, the panic mode sets in when you know you haven't got too much time left. The way in which Sean worked today, for me, was really confidence building. The lamb with the peppers and the courgettes, but the Underlying flavour was that of just raw olive oil. But what she was attempting was right. And again, really impressed that she came up with the crumble. The fruit inside the crumble was beautiful, really good. Presentation's a bit of an issue. It was all a bit slapdash, thrown on the plate, all spilling over the plates. Big mistake. Shobna delivered really good flavours for me today. The couscous was a nice idea, all those Mediterranean vegetables. The lamb had big flavours. Both of those plates that she served us were packed full of favour, but they belonged on one plate and she should have done us another dish. I, I did know it tasted all right, but, I mean, I know they were right when they said that this is one dish and I've just split them up. I see no reason whatsoever why all three of these can't have a very, very good round in the professional kitchen. With a professional kitchen, there'll be an expectation that you know your dishes and that you'll have cooked them before. And I feel it'll be a lot more nerve-wracking tomorrow than today. I'm looking forward to going into the professional kitchen tomorrow because I think that's going to be really exciting. There's more to me than meets the eye or the palate. I'm just going to have to keep focused when they give me that dish and make sure that I send some food out into the restaurant that somebody's going to say, I really enjoyed that. Wouldn't that be something? It's day two, and Shobna, Dennis and Sean arrive at the Howard in central London. They'll be working a busy lunchtime service under executive chef Brian Spark. Food here at the Howard, modern British cuisine. Presentation on the plate has to be spot on every time. Listen to me and we'll get on fine. Come with me, I'll show you. In service, Dennis will be cooking a main of sea bream with cocoa beans, lardons and a lemon compote. That's it. You cut right through. No, just... His first task is to fillet the fish. Hold on one second. See where you've gone into the flesh? You need to stay down on this bone. Oh, underneath. Just yeah. under there, yeah. If you don't get it right, it won't, it won't get cooked. So you can't be wasting lovely food like this. Oops. Oh, no. That should be under there, shouldn't it? You should be. We uh, got ten fish in today. He's already mucked up three of them, so I need to keep an eye on them. Or we're going to be struggling for service with no fish. I hope um, there's not a lot of keen fish eaters in the restaurant today. Sean is in charge of juniper crusted venison with red cabbage, broccoli, and a celeriac puree. It's exactly like doing the weather, you're up against the clock, which of course is what I do in my daily job in any case. You've always got that clock ticking down the seconds and they tick down doubly fast in this kitchen, believe you me. Shobna is cooking pigeon with mushrooms and pancetta, accompanied by a chestnut soup. I'm just really excited about it. I don't know how it's going to be. The lunchtime service begins and Shobna's first to get an order for her pigeon and chestnut soup. Two soup, and then two soup, one duck, and then another two soup. So start getting a pan on ready for your gerols, your leeks on, get your soup in a pan, keep turning your pigeon as you go, yeah? As well as cooking the five components of her dish, she needs to quickly debone the pigeon before it gets cold. OK. Well, you're not doing too well, though. Right, yeah, hold on, hold on. Too close to the bone. Yeah, but you've got the bone here as well, so you just need to go in and then you just want to cut it off and leave it there. Okay? Up on the pass and then we'll get this fanned out ready. Service. Just watch the edges of this, yeah? Never serve it if it's all dripped on the sides. Finally, her dishes are away. Right, main course away for venison, yeah? Yes, chef. Orders are in for Sean's venison. It's a dish which requires skilled presentation, something she struggled with yesterday. See, when you do this, yeah. try and get the back of your spoon right, and really yeah, drag yeah. it through, OK? Do 
where you just want to get a nicer edge on that. Let's move quickly. Right, careful with it. You you've dribbled all up the side here. In fact, let's start this one again. And then we're straight into three more venison. I've never worked so hard in my life, honestly. Well, the plates were a tad messy, you know, I wasn't doing the patterns in the correct way. The pace is so frantic. Right, smash three, course two, bream, one venison. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dennis? Yes, two, yes, bream, one venison, yes, yeah. Sir. Come on, listen up. It's halfway through service, and Dennis has orders backing up for his sea bream. Salt? No, need this. Where's the salt gone? Where's the salt, 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 salt? She need to be really gentle with her, chef. Really, really gentle. You just put it in, in the pan like so. It'll break it's up just, a She's going to stick and break, yeah? See if we can save this. Okay. Well done, chef. Wonderful. Right, up on the stove. Right, so, Dennis, we need to play up this too. It's going with one venison, OK? Come on, we need to move quickly, yeah? Yeah, fennel on. Is that fennel OK like that, yeah? Yeah. Service, please! Right, <laughs> just try and keep it a little bit neater on the plate. Yeah, yeah. Got to move quicker, though, yeah? It was manic there, right in the, in the middle of it all, but I'm just trying to keep focused. Service, please. With service drawing to a close, Shobna's thriving under the pressure. I'm loving it. <laughs> it's, it's so much fun. Service here. Absolutely fantastic. You tasted the soup, you see it needed more, but more seasoning. Fantastic. Okay, right, let's go. Sean's venison is also still proving popular. Right, guys, I need two venison, one bream, then I need two venison. We chef. How long? Ready, oh. chef. She's cooking the meat perfectly, but can she finally get her presentation right? Our sauce is on, is it? Yep, great. Fantastic, much better, yeah? Thank you, chef. That's two of the neatest dishes I've seen today. Fantastic. Right, guys, that's the end of service. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank Thank you. you. Take care. Thank you. Um, I was a bit nervous this morning when I got out of my bed, but um, yeah, I was quite surprised actually. They all did very, very well. Shobna was focused all the way through. A little bit tricky taking the meat off the bone, the pigeon off the bone. Um, but by the end of it, I was able to sort of step away from her and just let her get on. In a professional restaurant, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of information all at once. It's great. It's great. I like it. I think I buzz off that. Sharon was very good. Cooking of her venison was fantastic. When she was plating up, a little bit messy at the start, but she seemed to get the hang of it by the end of it. That taught me a lot about presentation today, and it showed me that I needn't be as scared of it as I have been in the past. Dennis, his cooking of his fish was fantastic, but yeah, just the general speed of the service. Um, if we weren't there to sort of keep him going, it would have been a struggle. This has been much tougher than I thought it was going to be. I think I'm ready for a little, uh, a little drink of something, I think. Of the three of them, if I was to employ one, Shobna most definitely focused the whole way through. Ten out of ten. Now they're straight back to MasterChef HQ to show how their experience has improved their own cooking. Hunger to win? Who knows? I've just got a hunger to do well for myself and my son and my family. I think I need to work on speed and presentation this afternoon. I really do. I think to get through to the quarter-final, I'm going to have to hit everything absolutely spot on. And even then, it might not be good enough. There is a quarter-final place up for grabs. All you have to do is cook very, very well, and that place is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, two dishes, one hour. Let's cook. After disappointing yesterday with his Irish stew, snooker champion Dennis has opted to play it safe. Dennis, you have about four ingredients on your bench, no, no. and we're going to be cooking two dishes. No. How does this work? I'm going to do a chicken liver salad, and then I'm doing um, a salmon on a bed of spinach salsa. It's what you're trying to do is, is to keep within your comfort zone? Yeah, I, I don't want to try and go too experimental, otherwise I'll get myself lost. Do you want to go further this competition? 
It would be a, a tough struggle. Uh, the girls are excellent, but you never know. I mean, I was 8 0 down against uh, Steve Davis and come back and won a final. Hey. I guess those round Dennis has got a lot of work to do, but I do wonder whether a simple chicken liver salad or a seared salmon with spinach salsa is going to be enough. Whether girl Sean has struggled with presentation throughout, can her Welsh inspired two course menu show she can lift her game? I'm doing a petit pois soup with crispy Carmarthen ham. I'd normally do suin if it was the right time of year, which is the salmon trout from West Wales. Right. So I'm doing salmon. What about this whole issue and presentation, Sean? How are you going to make these look sexy? Having been in the restaurant today, I realised that presentation is a big part of it. Mm. And I hope I've learnt something from that today. I'd like to eat Sean's food, but this is Master Chef. Will she be able to make those dishes look elegant? You have just 20 minutes left. Yesterday, Shobna struggled to complete two plates of food. Can she now build on her strong restaurant round? Shobna, you have the most ingredients on your bench today of all the contestants in the room. Does that mean that you've given yourself too much to do? Maybe. I wanted to set myself a challenge. I'm going to make my fish in a sauce of yoghurt and mint and chilies with a few lentils and some chocolate cake for afters. Do you think that you have got what it takes to make your quarterfinals? Definitely. What is it you think takes you to become a quarterfinals? Creativity, focus and a love of food. Shobna has given herself a huge amount of work to do, and if she pulls it off, that's going to be seriously impressive. Not only has Shobna got a lot of work to do, she's got to balance all of those massive flavours on one plate. Guys, you've got only three minutes. Put it down, guys. Step away from your benches, please. Put it down. Down. Time's up. For his first course, Dennis has made a chicken liver salad followed by pan-fried salmon on a bed of spinach salsa. Chicken livers are, are quite nice, are decent, but the only flavour is a chicken liver, really. You could have got something acidic, something quite lemony, as a dressing on those leaves, and that would have given a nice right, contrast. Yeah, yeah. But it needs another flavour. I think it's a, a fairly easy dish to prepare, but actually... I really like that sort of wonderful, pure, rich meatiness and, and ironness that goes with those chicken livers. And now your salmon. Salmon could have been cooked by a professional. I mean, that is perfect, Dennis. Spinach lacks flavour again. You need another flavour in there. Everything on that plate is cooked perfectly, and for me, that is good, honest food. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. Thank you. Can Sean impress with both flavour and presentation with her pea and lettuce soup with ham and her salmon with a cockle vinaigrette and mash? I think it's bowl of soup but I think it's really delicious. It's uh, soft, it's soothing, it's packed full of flavour. I think it's really delicious. It's really lovely. Uh, it, I don't think you could have done the soup better than that. Good. To salmon. Flavours are buttery potato, sharp cockle vinegar, vinaigrette, and then the sweetness of the fish. But that dish should be snogging you, and what it's doing is it's giving you a polite kiss on the cheek. Again, it is slippery with olive oil, like last time. The salmon, for me, is perfectly cooked on the inside. Texturally, it's a little bit soft. The texture of the potato is quite slimy, and the underlying flavour of the whole dish, once again, is olive oil. I so want to taste the actual things on the plate, and I can't taste them. 
For her first course, actress Shobna has cooked monkfish on puy lentils with a mango salsa, followed by chocolate brownie cake with raspberries and mascarpone. It's a mystery ride of flavours. It's like mint and it's chilli and it's mango, monkfish. Not unpleasant, but bordering strange. Your monkfish is cooked perfectly. Your lentils are lovely and crisp. Your mango salsa by itself has a good flavour. Chuck the whole lot together and it's just too much for anybody to cope with. Okay. I admire your cookery skill though. And here is your chocolate cake. Sharp raspberry, chocolate, chocolate, cocoa. Absolutely wonderful. Sharp raspberry, sour, rich, lovely cocoa, but sweet mascarpone is absolutely perfect. I like the idea of that. John and I have now got some real serious judging to do, so off you go. How quick was that? Oh. Oh. One of these is going to become a quarter finalist. We're going to have to send two of these home. I am far from decided on, on who it's going to be. If there was somebody who had to really improve today, it was Dennis. He fried the salmon beautifully, but that's not demonstrating enough skill to make him a quarter finalist. He couldn't do anything else. He knew he couldn't do anything else, so he kept it honest. And I thought the flavours were great. When John said he enjoyed it, I mean, it really does boost your confidence. Um, considering I've only just started cooking. But we want somebody who can hold their own and make it as a semi-finalist. He doesn't have the skill, and I think you're right. Let's take Dennis out of the equation, if we agree. Yeah. Take Dennis out of the equation, he goes home. Let's talk about Sean versus Shobna. Shobna uh, gave us a monkfish dish, and it wasn't unpleasant. It was very confused, but it wasn't unpleasant. But, you know, there's something about that main course I really like. The yoghurt and the monkfish and the cumin seeds was well cooked and really tasty. The mango salsa on the outside was well done. They didn't belong together, but all those component parts worked. I wanted to try something different for MasterChef. What's the point of coming on MasterChef and cook everything that I always cook? Sean gave us the most beautiful soup. Sweet with the peas, really buttery, lovely. The salmon dish for me was really difficult. It should have been that rich salmon with the buttery potatoes and the, you know, the lovely vinaigrette of those cockles. But all I could taste was this rich green banana olive oil. I could have done the salmon better without a shadow of a doubt. I'm so annoyed with myself for using olive oil with the salmon. Sean has given us good, competent, cook knowledgeable cooking, John. Good foundation. I look over at Shobna's food, it's wild. But she understands how to get flavour into her food. It's not quite coherent, and that's the gamble, isn't it? Decision time. Who's that quarterfinalist? And our quarterfinalist? It's shown now. <laughs> it would have been lovely to have learnt more, but I've had my day in the kitchen and I'm grateful for that. I'm a bit relieved that I haven't gone through bit disappointed also, but over the moon with the remarks I've had. 60 years of age now, and I'm learning a whole new thing to cook. It's fantastic. Hurrah! I'm very fired up by this opportunity. I'm very excited. I want to see where I can go now, and because I love food so much, it means a lot to me. I think my son will be very proud of me and my mum. Shobna will be back for the quarter-final. But up next, three more celebrity cooks battle to join her. Oh, I'm a bit nervous, actually. I feel like the day, you know, like sitting your big exam. 
a lot more nervous than I would have imagined. <laughs> what I'm most scared about is making a complete fool of myself in front of a lot of people. In my mind, I am a master chef and it's all about making it happen. All you got to do is cook for us two delicious dishes. Something that will demonstrate to us that you have great cooking potential. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. <laughs> The celebrities have 50 minutes to create two exceptional dishes from ingredients which include chicken, leeks, tin tomatoes, feta cheese, rocket, pointed cabbage, black olives, potatoes, brioche and bananas. The very best of cooks, those that practice, those who really cook at home, get through this very well. The ones who don't are found out very quickly. Saira Khan, we know from The Apprentice, we know she's extremely driven. Saira Khan thought Alan Sugar was tough. She ain't seen nothing yet. I am a bit of a control freak. Most business people are. For me, cooking is about concentration, focus, get it right, and no other distractions. Saira, you look a little bit nervous. I'm actually panicking. Why panic? Because I'm an Indian Asian girl and I need chilli. And there's no chilli. The thing with me is I will try. I will try my best. And that's all I can do. Good. Good luck. I need it. 15 minutes gone. Quarter of an hour gone. Brian Moore, the champion rugby player. I have to confess, I'm a huge fan. If he cooks any way like he plays rugby, we're going to have food all over this kitchen. I am so competitive. I will approach this as I approach anything else as a competition. I will try to win it. Uh, and if I don't, I will not be pleased. Brian, yeah. when you came in, a look of complete and utter determination on your face. It just masks fear very well. <laughs> what are you going to cook for us, Brian? Baked chicken and uh, garlic mash, and then bruschetta with a topping. Do you cook at home? I cook uh, nearly every day, yeah. yeah. How far would you like to go? Obviously, I'd like to win it. Don't do anything unless you want to win. What's the point? Ladies and gentlemen, you are halfway. 25 minutes gone, 25 minutes left. Tracy Ann Oatman, we know as the actress of EastEnders, and we know her as the one who finished off Dirty Dan. We want a little bit better than you can get at the Queen Vic, you know what I'm saying? To win MasterChef would be unbelievable. You can't murder Dirty Dan and bury him under the Queen Vic without a winning spirit, can you? A love of food, where does that come from? I just like the creativity of it. It's more than just taste, isn't it? I think there's theatre in cooking and, and, and eating, and I really love that aspect of it. So if it tastes nice, I think it's all about the good reviews. And today, good reviews, do you think? No, probably not. I'm really underconfident. Two minutes! That's all you've got. Two minutes. That's it. Finished. Step away. Instead of a first dish of bruschetta, ex-rugby player Brian has turned the disaster with his mash into a leek and potato soup. With about six or seven minutes to go, you were staring down the barrel of a gun because the mash was going to pieces. And actually, you managed to get two dishes up. Yep. Texture's too watery and a bit too creamy, but actually the flavours in there are actually quite good. You can get the leek out of that. 
and get a chive and it's been seasoned. It's too watery, there's too much stock in it, but we have the flavour of potatoes, we have the flavour of leeks, and the idea of dropping the chives on top to get a bit more flavouring is a very, very good one. Brian, you've got a bowl of soup up, that's a good start. His second dish of baked chicken with tomato and olive sauce is now being served on brioche. Your chicken is well cooked and you have lovely sweet tomato and onion flavour around the outside. It does need something else and it ain't brioche. The idea of having to eat the brioche with that wonderful tomato sauce is going to make it a little bit too rich and a bit too sweet. Presenter Syra has made a first course of chicken with sauté potatoes and a rocket and olive salad. Flavour of the chicken and the olives together with that rich tomato sauce is really nice. Your chicken's slightly dry, the potatoes, some of them aren't quite cooked enough. But essentially, your flavours are pretty good. Potatoes are a little firmer than they should be. I don't mind, actually, because the whole thing is seasoned very, very nicely. Will the judges be as impressed with her banana pancake dusted with cocoa powder? Sultanas, soft bananas, well-made pancake, not too thick. Lots of really good flavours in there. Because there's so much cocoa, first of all, on your tongue, that is bitter. But it soon gets to sweet. Sultanas, banana, very sweet. I've got a sweet too, but absolutely lovely. <laughs> For her first dish, actress Tracy Ann has made feta salad with cabbage, olives, capers and almonds, and a balsamic and soy sauce dressing. You've got the crunch of those leaves mm. and the saltiness of that cheese, mm -hmm. and you get a little bit of sweetness from balsamic, mm -hmm. and then you've got soy coming in there as well, and that's not good. It's got lots and lots of flavours in it, it's just slightly confused about what it wants to be. It's sort of amalgamation of bits and pieces rather than being just a salad. Are the flavours more balanced in her second dish? Herb chicken on a bed of sautéed potatoes. The chicken's cooked fine, but there's good flavours on there. The flavours those herbs underneath that chicken is good. What you have done with that chicken is put lots and lots of lovely herbs inside and then cooked it really well. There is a lot of this competition to go yet. Yeah? That's not a bad start. Off you go. Lots of mistakes in the room today, but in a way, it was good that they made lots of mistakes because they're all learning from those mistakes. Syrah was in a right tiz, but actually, you looked at the main course and you thought, not bad, chicken and tomato sauce, and actually you've made a pancake. You put bananas in it, you've got the coke on the top, you must do a bit of cooking. There were little points that weren't quite right. The chicken was a little bit dry. The sautéed potatoes, great idea. Some of them a little bit underdone. I was pleased that I came up with something that looked decent on a plate and I didn't poison anybody today, but I still think that I've got so much more to give. Brian Moore, the mash went completely and utterly wrong. And then he had to salvage both those dishes and make them something else. I'm feeling embarrassed, actually, and quite shocked, actually. I've never, ever, ever got mash wrong before. If I'd have been at home, it would have been against the wall at home and I'd just thrown it. That soup. We had the nice flavour of leeks. I like that, but there was no body at all. It was like a drink. Brian's chicken was cooked absolutely perfectly. The tomato sauce was really well flavoured. But he'd stuck it on top of brioche. Never going to work. 
Tracy Ann had a feta salad, which is a which is a decent idea, but didn't know when to stop. Just kept throwing ingredients at it. I was just putting everything that was on the work surface in there, which is probably not the best way to cook. Her chicken was done quite well. Butter and the herbs made it lovely and lovely and moist. I can't match up the cook who, on one hand, stuffs herbs and butter under a chicken skin with someone who throws nuts, soy sauce and balsamic into a dish. Our celebrities tomorrow are going to face their first professional kitchen. I think each of them is aware of exactly what they've got to do in order to progress. I think they'll all come out fighting tomorrow. I'm looking forward to, to working in the kitchen. I, I'm, I'm used to working in, in teams, but my confidence, I have to say, has been jolted. And, and now I'm thinking, please don't mess things up. I don't know how I'll cope in a professional kitchen. I hope that the chef's going to be patient. I'm hoping I'll be all right. I can get quite flustered. I don't think they're going to appreciate that, so I hope I can just calm down and just execute what I'm supposed to do. It's day two, and Tracy Ann, Brian, and Syra arrive at the Albion, a gastro pub in Islington, North London. The celebrities will be working under head chef Liam Kerwin. In service, the most important thing is to get the food out fast to the customer, nice, clean, and hot. So if you'd like to follow me, we get going. With just two hours until service, the celebrities start prepping their dishes. Tracy Ann is making a starter of baked salsify with thyme and St. Tola cheese. I am quite worried that there's paying customers out there who are coming in and don't realise that it's been cooked by novices. A little bit nervous. Brian is making roast salmon with Colcannon salad and cockle butter. I'm worried about the first order, I'm worried about the last order and every order in between. Today, I am going to make mistakes. I've got to get it right. Syro is responsible for roast partridge with turnip, carrot and pear casserole. I don't want to let the chef down. I don't want to let this place down. And so the pressure is on, and I've got to deliver. It's 12 o'clock, and the restaurant's filling up. OK, one big salt fee, one pot of duck. Chef. Tracy, that's your section. Yeah, I'm calling out your order. I need to hear you. Yes, yeah, chef. Tracy Ann is first to get an order. I would go another minute in that. It's the time. oven, isn't it? Yeah, bad worker blames the tools. Don't that say test. that, Chef. After struggling with her timings, can she now plate up to the chef's standards? Yeah. One salsa for Chef. Don't be so heavy-handed on the parsley that you don't want any salads. And a bit of olive oil on there as well? Yeah, it's a lot more pressurised than I would have imagined. Oh. Get a new order. Five parsley. Five parsley? Oh, my God. Uh, yes, Chef. Can you order one partridge? Oh! No drama, no drama. No drama, no drama. I'm calm. Straight in the top shelf. Can you order four partridge? I completely lost count of how many partridges I'm supposed to do. Get a count on how many partridges you got in order now. Just have a look at your tickets right. and give me counts. Six partridge. You sure? What about these two? Oh, Seven. So that's twelve. Oh. Twelve partridge. It's all a bit. Chef, one partridge ready to go. OK, I need two more straight up, yeah? Yes, yeah, Chef. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Can you order one salmon, one partridge? Hello? Yes, yes, yes. After yesterday's mashed potato disaster, Brian is throwing himself into service. Brian. Two minutes, Chef. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. No, you want to get the actual sauce itself and go around, yeah? Mm. 
Really good. Really good. Service! Pressure, but um, I'm enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it. It's halfway through service, and Tracy Ann's dish is proving popular. I've got an order of five thousand feet in the oven. It's quite good, <laughs> quite pressurised. But can she get them all out on time? Tracy Ann, you're looking a lot better on these. They're nice and crispy, yeah. Yes, chef. You got your five pouches already. Having panicked earlier, can Syra now hold her nerve, plating five orders? Five parted ready. OK, thank you. I think the pressure has really helped me to work a bit more efficiently, and I'm, I'm just going with the flow. Meanwhile, Brian is in his element, impressing the chef. That salmon is beautiful. Yes, chef, thank you, chef. I panicked less in here when the pressure was on than I did yesterday on my own, far less. I've really enjoyed it. OK, guys, that's it. Service is over. Thank you very much. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Take care. It was busy. That was a busy, that was above average lunch for us. And they held their own. Tracy Ann, she did well. It started off with one or two. She was a little bit shaky. Then she just seemed to kind of get a lot more confidence in what she was doing. She did well. I think originally my first batch that went out didn't look so great. But I think by the end, they were looking good. So when the, the ticket machine started rolling, she just was a, you know, like a rabbit in the headlights. Maybe this is her her business skills come into place because as service went on and it got busier and busier, she seemed to kind of settle more into it and just went into a rhythm and managed. It has been absolutely so manic. I have never worked in an environment like this. Oh, I need to lie down. Of the three, uh, the one that did the best was definitely Brian. The salmon was absolutely beautifully pink, exactly how we wanted it to do. Brian, out of all, was the best on his section. I've actually got a huge buzz out of this. And I, I, it set me up for this afternoon. Now they're straight back to MasterChef HQ to show if the restaurant has improved their own cooking. I'm trying not to be nervous about going back in, but if I didn't get through the first round, I would feel that I'd let everyone down, really, and myself. I think I have some basic skills, and if I can keep my confidence up, I hopefully will be all right. I really believe that this competition can unlock a potential. I really want to get through to the quarterfinals. Your two courses, we're going to give you one hour to cook them in. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. After failing to successfully make mashed potato yesterday, can Brian now build on his impressive restaurant round? Brian, are you having another go at mashed potato? Yes, I am, and I hope I'll get it right this time. What are your two dishes? Linguine with uh, chorizo, king prawns and a bit of garlic. Then it's uh, pork tenderloin with a sauce of uh, calvados, uh, shallots, horseradish mash and uh, steamed green beans. It was a big, tough round for you yesterday, wasn't it? I found it hard and uh, it gave me, well, it gave me probably a kick that I needed. Nothing wrong with Brian's dishes, absolutely lovely. It's just whether he can actually get those dishes up. You've had 20 minutes, 20 minutes gone. After adding too many ingredients to her salad yesterday, can actress Tracy Ann now show she can balance flavours? What do you think today you've got to show us to make you stay in the round? I, I'm going with what you said about flavours, but not over-flavouring. Stick with a the theme, don't go too crazy, just simplify everything down. Do you think you chucked too many flavours in it yesterday? Oh, I went mad yesterday. I really panicked. I went to pieces. What are you going to make for us? Doing a pan fry sea bass on a bed of um, green lentils in the shallot dressing and a tiramisu for dessert. Tracy Ann's got sea bass on top of lentils. It sounds nice. It's whether she's throwing too many flavours at it again. You've got 15 minutes left. 
Syra wants to show off her skill with spice cooking two Indian dishes. Wow. Um, few Asian spices. Are, are you going back to your roots? Yeah. My two dishes are cardamom chicken curry and French bean and cashew nut thorn. I don't really know what a thorn is. It's a, it's a Carolan dish. It's the first time I've ever done it. So I'm just going to see how it goes. I'm not scared of doing that. It's highly risky to come on here and cook dishes you've never cooked before. We shall see. Can she pull it off? Five minutes. Only five. You have 30 seconds. Come on. That's it. EastEnders star Tracy Ann has made pan-fried sea bass on a bed of pre-lentils with mushrooms and a shallot dressing, followed by a classic dessert, tiramisu. I love the sort of crispy and soft fish amongst the sort of earthiness of those lentils and the freshness of those herbs. I really like the dish. That tastes great. Oh, thanks, Greg. That, that really tastes great. That fish is cooked really well, it's soft, it's falling apart, and it's been seasoned very, very well. Really enjoyed that. Let's move on from fish. Tiramisu. Sweet, thick, rich with coffee, full of flavour. I think it's just a little bit too sweet for me. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's really good. <laughs> it's, it's a boozy, coffee, sweet, heady delight. That's, that's a put lover's joy. Rugby player Brian has made tagliatelle with chorizo and garlic prawns, followed by pork fillet with calvados sauce, horseradish mash and steamed green beans. I think flavours are all superb. Your pasta's nicely cooked, it's still got a bit of give. It's that paprika sausage you get, but you still get the sweetness of that prawn. That combination works and works very, very well. Absolutely superb. The flavours are right, it's the way in which they're combined which hasn't quite worked. Because we've got big prawns on there and slices of chorizo and our linguine sitting underneath it, it's all a bit disparate. Mm. It hasn't come together as a single dish. Mm. That was your pasta. Pork and beans. I love the textures, love the way you cook the pork. You've attempted a great deal here. Mashed potatoes, very soft, very, very lovely. Very powerful sauce, too powerful. I like the richness and the depth of that sauce. Against that well-seasoned, quite peppery pork and the mashed potato, which is made very, very well indeed. For her first course, presenter Syra has made an experimental Carolan French bean and cashew thorin salad, followed by an Indian cardamom chicken curry. I get the flavour of the roasted cashew nuts and the mustard seeds. And I get ginger in there, which gives me quite ferocious heat. It's just a little bit too harsh for me. I got a lovely toasted cashew nut, crunch of a bean, lime juice, hint of a curry leaf underneath. I thought that taste was very, very nice indeed. The problem is here, you can't properly present to us a dish that you've never tried before. Yeah. From salad 
to curry. We have the warmth that comes with the chilli, we have the spice of the cardamom and we have the richness of the chicken. I think the flavours are really delicious. But that rice isn't cooked enough. Chicken is cooked to perfection. It's moist and it's soft. And that sauce warms your whole mouth. I think that is cleverly spiced food. Thank you. Well done, good work. You've put a lot into today. Off you go. Syrah's first course, her bean salad from Kerala, had lots and lots of definitive flavours in it. But for me, it was all sort of bitty rather than being lovely and harmonious. Coming onto MasterChef and serving a dish that not only have you never cooked before, but you've never eaten either. If you don't know what it's supposed to taste like, how on earth can you make one? It's a very, very strange thing to do. I really am a little bit annoyed at myself that um, I did a starter that I'd never cooked before. But that's me, you know, I'll take a bit of a risk. I really liked the way she cooked the chicken. I liked the flavours on the chicken. I've got to ask, what happened to her rice? She didn't cook her rice properly. I've got a serious issue with someone who can't cook rice. I was actually really surprised with Tracy Ann. Both dishes absolutely bursting full of flavour. I thought the fish was seasoned really well, cooked beautifully. The dessert looked beautiful. Yes, it was a bit sweet for me. Love that tiramisu. Absolutely loved it. I was really pleased that they felt that my flavours went well together. It would be great to go through. Brian put a lot of work in. Cooked the chorizo and the prawn really well. The combination of the prawn and the chorizo was lovely. That bowl of pasta could have been glorious. It just wasn't quite holding together. The best part of Brian's pork for me was the sauce. It went beautifully with the mashed potato. I didn't particularly like Brian's sauce, but I can admire the work that went into it. I see where the guy's coming from. I'm feeling relieved because I've come through the ordeal and I'm just pleased that I managed to do some of the things right. They've each got something they can give this competition. Who is going to advance through it, John? We can only take one of you through, and we made our decision. The contestant going through to the next round. It's Tracy Ann. <laughs> well done. I can't believe it. I might as well have won an Oscar. I feel that good about it. Right now, I'm feeling desperately disappointed. For right or wrong, I am a very competitive person, and to lose, I hate losing. I really do hate losing. I'm disappointed that I didn't get through a bit. Hey ho, you learn, and I've just got to keep going and uh, and perfect my cooking. I mean, I've been given a fantastic opportunity here, and I am so excited about what's going to come next. Tracy Ann will join Shobna for the quarterfinal to battle against two other celebrity cooks. <laughs>